Short Box Nation. I am sitting here with uh, Richard Brake, a.k.a. Joe Chill from uh, Batman Begins, Doomhead from the Rob Zombie 31 movie, and of course, the Night King in seasons four and five of Game of Thrones. Richard, how are you enjoying Collective Con? Um, having a great time, actually. Yo. Yeah, really great time. Fantastic. It's, um, you know what I like about it? It's not, it's not a massive con, mm-hmm. but it's, um, it's it, you know, so in a way, what you're getting is more time with everybody. You know, so it's nice to be, we're, we're busy, but we're, we're not so busy that we have to go, oh, sorry, you got to move on to the next person. You know, so we can chat. People can ask a lot of questions and will generally uh, spend some time with us, which is, which is fun for us and I hope for them. I, I think a lot of people are like, I am sick of listening to that guy talk. I really <laughs> wish you'd just shut up so I could move on. No, actually, you, you had me in stitches uh, at the Game of Thrones panel. You were, you were killing it, man. And I got to compliment you, man. You, you do uh, make time for every single person. And I, I think that's a really important thing. Yeah, when I it do comes too. To these comments. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, to me, um, I think one of the important things when I started doing it was realizing that, you know, people really you know they pay a lot to come in they pay mm-hmm. a lot you know for autographs they, you know and and it's a it's a big thing and and what i've discovered from spending the time with people and really trying to give them some attention and really a- answer their questions and, and 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 uh and listen with them is that um is how much these shows have impacted them that i've been in for example game of thrones mm-hmm. or if they're rob zombie fans or just for me it's incredibly rewarding to you know, have the experience of, of talking to people and seeing how this, say, Game of Thrones, for example, how it's affected them and mm. how it's, you know, in many cases, really changed their lives yeah. and been a part of their lives. I was just saying to Paul Blackthorne, who's here as well, it's a good friend of mine, you know, we're both agreeing. Mm. Actually, Paul's show, Arrow, was a big part of my life with my 16-year-old when he was like 12. We used to watch that together yeah. and spend a lot of time. He was, you know, he was going through a divorce at the time, or I was, and so he was. Um, and, you know, that was a real bonding thing for us to to watch that show together you know now he's 16 and it's a completely uncool show for a 16 year old but when he was 12 it was a very <laughs> cool show and so we would spend time and i was telling paul that and saying you know how and i've known paul a long time before that i've known paul for like 20 years but i was saying how you know thanking him for that and you know my chance to do that people are having the chance to do the same to me so oh, you know we, we go watch game of thrones we love watching it together my family watches game of thrones together thank you so much you know i watch it with my mom my mom you know all that kind of yeah. stuff really you know you know before con- conventions we as actors never knew that hmm. you know we didn't know the impact our work was having in film and television on stage we do more but on film and television we don't know and so these things are great opportunities for me to hear that i love that does it ever surprise you the amount of fandom that a character like the night king has especially considering that you don't really have any lines. Like, yeah, it doesn't ever funny, surprise right? you. Like, wow, you guys really like this character. I never said yeah, anything. It surprised me. I'll tell you what, he seems to have grown in popularity a little bit. I've noticed too over the last couple of years. Hmm. Um, you know, obviously, he's got more of a storyline, as it were, become more aware who he is. But um, I think it doesn't really, I, it doesn't surprise me because, you know, I also play, like you mentioned, Rob Zombie's 31 and other films with Rob. And I play some people that are just, just as nasty or from, you know, many mm-hmm. ways than Night King. And, uh, People love them, so I think we have a tendency to really love the dark side of uh, of of these shows and of these characters. And I think again, that goes back to the need for us, all of us, get a kind of catharsis out of seeing, um, you know, seeing the bad guy and liking the bad guy. Yeah. We all kind of like the bad guy because we all want to be a little bit of the bad yeah, guy yeah, ourselves. Absolutely. I get the great job of pretending to be the bad guy. I get to play the bad guy. I always joke that I did a film called Hannibal Rising in uh, about ten, twelve years ago, and in that film, I, I eat. Hannibal's sister actually so I would go to work and I would eat a child and then I would come home and play with my kids you know so that was kind of my my catharsis was actually a eating, a eating a child and going and playing with them yeah. afterwards so is it harder or or uh, easier playing a character like that has lines or a script versus someone like a Night King who is more about you know the body and the actions yeah I don't think this one is any easier than the other mm. um, they're just very different uh, with the Night King, I think it is challenging. Um, it was particularly challenging at first, trying to embody that darkness and mm-hmm. really go. You know, it was when I, you know, after the first day of shooting Hard Home, I really went home and thought, "What is this about?" And I really, it really dawned on me that, you know, it's a it's a show about many things, but one of which is good and evil. And he's the most evil character in this universe. He's the darkest you know character here 
the most, you know, an, an epitome of, of our greatest fear, really, which isn't just death, but that actually beyond death is something even worse. We become like an army of dead, you know, we become yeah. somebody's slave after, you know, it's a quite a hideous concept. And it was my job as an actor to embody that sort of place of darkness. And that to me is difficult to do in some ways, mm -hmm. but in other ways, I've done it so much, I'm able to kind of find it is just be in a very dark place. But to do it without any lines or whatnot, it's hard, but you just, you know, that's the fun of it. How, how would you unwind after having to be in the head of such a dark and evil character? It's weird. I just, because I think I've just been doing it so long, um, it just naturally kind of goes away. I say that, but then I just played a character in <laughs> Rob Zombie's Three from Hell, which yeah. is out in October, uh, called Foxy. And uh, my girlfriend, I, as, long, as much as a couple months ago, would even say to me, we just stop being Foxy, please. You know, because I would just occasionally <laughs> burst into Foxy. Yeah, yeah I would, I'd be me, and then all of a sudden, a little Foxyism would come out. Yeah, and she would say, "Oh, please stop! Where's what's Foxy doing here?" So I think they sort of exist within me, these characters. Mm -hmm. um, but most of the time, I can keep them at bay and just be myself. So you brought up hard home, so I, so I have to ask: How often do you get asked whether you're at a bar or just anywhere on public to do the infamous hand raise the infamous night you know i get asked a lot of conventions because obviously everybody mm -hmm. knows that it's me uh, luckily the prosthetics means that i don't get stopped in starbucks every week yeah, and get yeah. asked to do it otherwise i'd probably lose my mind <laughs> if people could recognize me on the street because yeah. i'd be asked to do it a lot um i actually don't mind doing it i do it quite often from photos when people want them and so That's it makes me laugh yeah so you know speaking about prosthetics i think the night king is probably one of the most visual appealing uh, elements of the show Game of Thrones can you talk about well can you tell us about just a, what a normal day on set preparing to get into costume or prosthetics and the makeup I mean how intense was that um, yeah basically you sort of wake up go there by three o'clock or so hmm. you do six hours in the prosthetic chair so you'd sit there in the makeup chair for six hours while they put the pre, uh, prosthetics on um, that then you put the costume on the costume is uh made of a kind of iron wow so it would actually be very heavy and also cause me to bleed because i'm quite skinny so there would be like a lot of blood pouring skinny out skinny man my, problems yeah I feel you. exactly I feel you. it's terrible and then uh <laughs> the contact lenses are the biggest you can put a human eye so they're hmm. absolutely agonizing they're the, actually the, the most uncomfortable part of the whole thing i uh, have fake teeth as well obviously so eating is pretty much non uh, non-existent and then fingernails like way out really really long fingernails which means that i can't really open a book belt, you know take my clothes off or anything and belt, a belt buckle or do any kind of things like that so kind of makes going to the toilet quite difficult in fact if i did go to the toilet i'd probably sever my penis because of the uh, <laughs> because of the nails so uh i basically try not to eat or drink very much yeah. during that whole shoot hmm. time because i have to kind of monitor how i know how much i'm going to lose because they would literally have to shut the production down if i went and I'm a little shy, so I don't think I could actually come out of a porta potty waiting yeah. for 500 extras staring at me. Do so um, it's cr it's grueling, and then it takes two hours to take it all off. Knowing a as intense as it is to even get prepared to play Nike, I mean, do you ever miss it? Do you miss? No, no, no I don't miss that aspect of it. I mean, I was very grateful to do it. I mean, I, hmm. you know, I, I I was saying to somebody earlier that. I mean, that, that is a grueling process. And I was actually afterwards offered, a, a, as you can imagine, as they do in Hollywood, you know, once they see you do one thing, then oh, they, they keep you offering you. The you know, so I was offered a lot of jobs uh, that involved mm -hmm. prosthetics, and I turned everyone down. I didn't even read the scripts half the time because um, I felt, you know, I didn't really want to come tight cast in that. There's a great guy named Doug Jones, who's uh, who I met many years ago in a movie called Doom, who's was in... Uh, recently in that Oscar-winning film, uh, The Shape of Water, I think. And he's you know, an incredible man. He's done this for decades. Oh, he decades. nailed it. In it. He's, an yeah, amazing, he's an amazing, amazing actor. And I'm not anywhere in that kind of category. So I really didn't want to even begin to go in there. But, um, I, I, but for this particular show, really because it's such an incredible show uh, and has really in touch people in this way that you know, nothing has, hmm. that to, be, to go through all of that work um, the prosthetic work, it was worth it to, for that reason. If it was any less of a show or less of a character, you know, it wouldn't be. No, that's but, really you know, I was so, so very grateful that, that, that they asked me to do it. But 
I don't think I would do it again. <laughs> I don't believe it. not if they're all that. It doesn't sound like it was too hard to channel, you know, anger or whatnot, especially being, you know, just uncomfortable. Probably, you know, it's needing like sitting in the corner is thinking, oh, I just want this to end. <laughs> and then like go and just you know, scare John. I'm like, that's yeah. no problem, man. I'll so, scare anybody right now. <laughs> so if you could, if you had the opportunity to play a, a different character with actual lines, who else would, do you think you would? You know, I, I saw it. I mean, there's so many great characters in that. I love Joffrey. Obviously, you know, I'm about 40 years too old. But mm -hmm. in true, if I was in a magic world where I could turn myself into a young man, I thought uh, the character of Joffrey was great. Yeah. But again, you, you you say that like I would I like to play it. To be honest, with you, I wouldn't because again, even though I was magically being able to be eighteen mm. again or whatever he was when he filmed it, you know the young lad. Um, uh, God, his name I can't remember. Gleason, but anyway, he's a fantastic young actor who's not even acting anymore. I heard he's now gone to university. He's not mm -hmm, really. Yep. But he's um, yeah. I thought he was such a brilliant young man. Uh, did such a great job with that role. And uh, yeah, I hated him so much. You know, <laughs> I think we all only a good actor right. could do that, yeah. and to be so young when he did it. I love uh, uh, Maisie, uh, who plays Arya. I thought she's a fantastic young actor as well. And um, you know, this just that's again the show. You, you you say you'd want to play these other characters, but the truth is, the ones you want to play have all been so well played mm. by other actors that when it comes to it, you know, there's no there's no one I would rather play than who I did play. Oh, that's fair. That's awesome. So I, I got to ask a, a question that uh, a fan had submitted. I told him, you know, I might be able to interview Richard Brake. What do you guys want me to ask okay. him? So the question is, you played Joe Chill, the man responsible for murdering Bruce Wayne's parents. You also played a character that would later go on in Game of Thrones to kill a dragon. The question is, who's next on the hit list, man? Uh, uh, yeah. That's a good question. I don't know. Yeah, Were you a right. fan of uh, Batman or the comics prior oh, well, to getting that role? I was a huge fan. Oh, but, uh, not, not as an adult so much. I mean, I, I, but as a, as a kid, it was, he was without a doubt my favorite. Hmm. Um, uh, I was going to say superhero, but he's not really a superhero. He's, you know, he's Batman um, by far. I mean, I was a huge fan hmm. when, I was, when I was younger. Um, and uh, I think I was always attracted to the there's a darkness to Batman, which obviously we all know is just such a darker comic than a lot of the other ones. I, I hated Superman as a kid, huh. you know, and, uh, but Batman was my thing. So obviously as a child, I wanted to be Batman. You know, in fact, that's one of the reasons I think I was always meant to be an actor is I was obsessed with being other people. Like I was pretend to be Batman, whereas most kids would go play Batman. I would be Batman for like all the time. Like I wouldn't yeah, stop yeah. pretending to be Batman. I would go to sleep being Batman. I would wake up, you know, I was obsessed with him. Or and then it would be somebody else, you know, six million dollar man or James Bond. But mm -hmm. basically, Batman was a big one. Kept coming back. So when I had the opportunity to be the man who killed his parents, I wish I was Batman. But <laughs> you know what? I'll take, I'll take I'll like, take the man who killed yeah. his parents any day. I'll of take the anything week. I can. And it was great. You know, it was a real honor, and I uh, also made my kids look a lot cooler when they were in the playground too. I guess. But you know, <laughs> there you go. That is awesome, Richard. What are you working on now? Where can people find um, you soon? A lot of stuff. I have a lot coming out. I've done, uh, you know, Rob Zombie's Three from Hell, like I mentioned, is coming out in October. So, uh, you know, anyone who is familiar with him at all will know that. Uh, and those that aren't, who like any kind of horror film, he's just a master, master director. I always say he's my favorite director to work with. You know, I work with Spielberg. I work with, like, hmm. Ridley Scott. I worked with Brian De Palma. You know, some amazing directors. And I'm not, you know, in any way saying I haven't enjoyed working with them, but... I love uh, Rob Zombie. He's so incredibly uh, imaginative and creative and inspiring for everybody who works for him. Um, so we have his new film. And all of us really think it's going to be his best uh, yet. And uh, also on top of that, I did a movie called Perfect Skin, which is a small British independent film, but really been well received at festivals all over the world, actually. And um, that is coming out in the States sometime soon. It's out already in the UK. And then I've got a TV series called Sanctuary that'll be out soon and a series called Cursed for Netflix. And then a movie with uh, Blake Lively called The Rhythm Section, which I show up and do a little bit of badness. And cool. then uh, I got say, oh, quite a few other bits and bobs that I think I've forgotten that I popped. A good friend of mine uh, is an actor named Eddie Morrison who was in Deadpool 2 and he's on Ray Donovan regularly. And... Uh, we, he coined the phrase um, pop-up actor. You know, we, we pop up yeah, and yeah. Uh, do, a bit of, do a bit of something. In my case, usually a bit of damage and then uh, despair, but we're, we're all pop-up actors. Yeah, I love it. I love being a pop-up actor. I'll ask one last Game of Thrones question, and, and I'll let you go, man. Um, do you still watch the show more or less, have you noticed, since 
your character had exited back no, in season about five. the same pretty much you know i try and keep up with it for sure definitely yeah. do you have any crazy theories that you want to share regarding oh the no i would i couldn't even begin to try and guess i, I think the other theory i think the theories that i've heard are so crazy i yeah. couldn't even imagine trying to beat those yeah gotcha well look uh richard thank you so much for, for taking you. the time to interview thank us you. Uh, or letting us interview you. Do you have a uh, social media that people can follow? Yeah, I'm on all Twitter and Instagram, so you can follow me on that for awesome. sure. Richard, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your Click and Call weekend. Man. Thank you.